In a fast-paced world, many of us struggle with overthinking and worry that leaves us feeling overwhelmed or stuck. In this podcast, we will hear stories of successful individuals and have conversations and ways to reach our true potential by embracing every micro detail of our identity, especially the flaws that make us unique. This is your host, Maria Grace Wolf. I'm a Filipino-American entrepreneur, psychotherapist, and mom of two boys. And my mission is to amplify diverse perspectives and experiences and inspire your journey to wellness and fulfillment. Hello, everyone. I'm super excited to introduce to you my guest for today, Kim Gamble. She is a friend and she is the owner of the most amazing most delicious, best Thai food restaurant in the Bay Area. Kim is Thai American, an entrepreneur, a chef, and founder of multiple businesses. Growing up and not seeing much representation of Asian Americans on any media, she made it her goal to try and see if she could represent. And this past February, she was recently featured on the Food Network channel, a television show called Beat Bobby Flay, where she had the opportunity to try and topple down Bobby Flay in a cooking competition. You can check out the episode online on foodnetwork.com. Hi, Kim. Please do us the honor of introducing yourself to our listeners. Hi. Hi. My name is Kimberly Susan Hahn Gamble. I'm 27 years old from Oakland, California. So currently right now, I'm an entrepreneur and a restaurateur. So right now I have two restaurants. I have one in Livermore called Lana Thai Restaurant, which is based on traditional Thai food. And then I have another one called Cousin Asian Street Food in Berkeley, California. And it is based on Southeast Asian food made with homemade rice noodles. Also opening up a juice bar, which is called Cool Juice Bar, which is using organic fruits to make cold pressed juice. But what's cool about this one, it's different from other juice bars, is actually importing tropical fruits from Asia and using that as, as ingredients as well. So there's not a lot of juice bars that uses Asian tropical fruits. And so it'd be really unique and it's actually really good and refreshing. And I also have another called Oosh, which is an herbal wellness remedy company brand that I'm putting together as well with some group of friends and which is going to have some skincare products, shampoo and essential oils. And currently right now we're starting out with essential oil and it's oils that is using organic Thai herbal ingredients. So it's really, really nice and calming feeling on yourself. You are a true serial entrepreneur. So Kim, please tell us your story. Tell us how you got to where you are today. I was born in Southern Thailand, and then I moved to California when I was about five years old. My mom passed away when I was a child, and she actually had a twin sister. And so she adopted me. My aunt and uncles adopted me, but now I call them my mom and dad. We're really we're super close. And so I... Pretty much grew up in the Bay Area, but I didn't have a normal childhood like everybody else. So my mom is full Thai style and my dad is Caucasian. So they have different lifestyles, different um, ways of thinking. But my mom had a restaurant when I was around eight years old. And so in the Asian family, you have to help your parents out at the family business. So my childhood, I would always be helping my mom at the restaurant. My dad was like, why are you doing this? She should be hanging out with her friends on the weekends and we should have family vacations. But during my childhood, I'd always be helping my mom at the restaurant. When I was a kid, I thought, why? Why do I have to help? I don't like it. Why? But really, she was actually looking after me and she knew that I'm really creative and really passionate for cooking. And so being in the restaurant industry, I was able to be in the kitchen. It's my creative outlet being in the kitchen. So she knew I really liked that. So when I was back in high school, I realized I actually like the restaurant business and doing the family business. And it just brings out my creativity. And that's a very common tradition that you just shared with us within the Asian culture, like you mentioned, where children are expected to help out with the family business. And it's, it's an example of how collectivism influence is the the Asian culture where unlike the individualistic culture in America where a person is encouraged to be independent and you know to do what they love follow your dreams the collectivistic culture emphasizes the needs and the goals of the family as a group as a whole and I love that you just shared with us how you didn't understand it at first you didn't love it at first you're confused early on 
but then realize that it's how you were able to find your passion and to find your path. And so at the age, after high school, at the age of 19, you opened up your first restaurant. Can you tell us about this? Opening a restaurant was school to me. It's just like hands on learning about what to do. And so it was cool because it was just everything was all new to me. But now after opening my first restaurant and it wasn't as successful as I was planning on being, but it was a learning point with now, if I want to open another business, I know what to do. And then I had another opportunity when I was about 20, 22 to open up a restaurant called Daughter's High Kitchen. And that one is based in Oakland, which was cool because it was upper high end Thai restaurant. So it was cool to work with other people and do bartending and just fine dining style. And when I was about 26, I was able to go on Food Network. Actually, I went on Beat Bobby Flay. So that was a really cool goal that I was able to accomplish was to go on national TV. That's incredible. Tell us more about that experience. So that was a really cool experience. Probably in my background, like I told you guys that I grew up in the restaurant business and cooking in the family kitchen. So I didn't go to culinary school. It was definitely being on the show was very intense because the people, the person I went against, he was 20 years older than me. He finished culinary school. He's traveled around the world. And I was more of a restaurant taught. My mom, a lot of my recipes and the way I know how to cook is from my mom and from my grandma and just family members. But I have people, friends and family who are chefs. So I've interned at some really known hotels in Thailand and just like learn really cool recipes. So my perspective on food is that you can turn it into art and that when, when I cook for somebody, I don't want them just to see the beauty of the dish, but they experience the flavor as well. But just being on the show was another huge life goal. Just to be on air, I was like, huh? And then when I got into the show, I only knew three days before that I was on the show. So there was, wait, so you're saying that they only gave you three days ahead of time to let you know that you're going to be on the show. Yeah, so I had to apply to be on the show. And it's actually a lot of steps that people don't really know. Like the first application is super easy. It's just your name, where you worked, how did you learn how to cook, and some photos of your food, and maybe a quick video of you. And so okay. that was the first step. The second step, if the casting crew saw your application is interested, they will give you a call and they'll interview over the phone. I've been trying to get on Food Network since I was 18 because I think the age to be able to be on the show, on certain shows, you have to be at least 18. So I've been trying since I was 18 and it took me almost eight years to be on the show. Wow. I've never passed that step. And for that eight years, I never got a call back. And I was like, what? Wow. I've had ones where they wanted more information. I had one for, was it? the Gordon Ramsay, the Hell's Kitchen, mm -hmm. have all those interviews and stuff. And they're like, okay, send me your fine dining photos. Okay, so I send them the photos and then I never heard back. Was, this is what happens. I guess I should get used to it. This is what happened in the film industry kind of thing. They just, if they're not interested, they're not interested and that was it. And that just shows your magnitude of perseverance. You know, not willing to give up on something that you really want to do. And that's very inspiring. And I did say, oh my God, what a way to represent the Asian community. How do you feel about just being out there because there's not a lot of Asian Pacific Islander representation? Definitely was an honor just to be on the show and just also representing API. Because you literally, just being a woman, just being in the kitchen, you see a lot of women in the kitchen, but they're not the head chef or the head person of the kitchen. And so it was cool just to represent the Asian community, to be on the show and just also being a woman on the show as well, because you don't. In the, I think in the restaurant industry, in the culinary industry, it's really male dominated. And, and so it's just, it, I think it's amazing just to be on and people recognizing that women is able to be in the kitchen as well. Too. Right. And on TV, right? The network is also male dominated. Yeah. I was just reading that between 2007 and 2019, 44 movies out of 1300 had Asian leading roles and it was mostly The Rock. <laughs> and that's it. We're invisible, but we're getting there. We're getting to that place where people are showing up and encouraging people to show up and take up space. And seeing you there on TV doing what you love is so empowering for the AAPI community, for the children. They can feel like this is something that is achievable for them as well. So it's really, you truly are a leader. Do you uh, see yourself as a leader? 
that I do see myself as a leader. I think one of my my goals too is to influence young the younger generation to really go for your goals and whatever you're really passionate about, just go for it. You'll make mistakes throughout the way, but you learn from your mistakes and you are able to achieve what you want to do. And so, for me to be on the network, I've been trying to be on that for almost ten years, so I never gave up. Then opportunities come up and then I just really went for the opportunity. Never pass down an opportunity. Don't think, hey, somebody gives you an opportunity and you think, no way, that's impossible. Just go for it. You don't know what the outcome will be. So I had the opportunity to interview for the show and I was like, okay, let's just, let's do it. I might not be on the show. I might be. It's a 50-50 chance. And guess what? I got to be on the show. So it's just, I really want to show people, just really go for what you love to do and just be really passionate about it. Things come and go, but just just really, just self-love and confident about yourself too as well. Oh, so. I love that. I love that. So during the pandemic, like so many others, you experienced a feeling of stuckness and burnout. You have been doing the same thing for a very long time. You started at the age of eight doing the restaurant business, and then... COVID happened, right? And a lot of people were feeling this exhaustion, fatigue. A lot of people felt that because just everything was so uncertain. And I think people had just the time to pause and look within and, you know, kind of take that self inventory of what do I want to do next? Where am I really? Am I really happy on, you know, how I'm living my life? Can you share with us how you managed through that? I think, to be honest, I was at a point where I was done. I was stuck. I was that person I was stuck and I wasn't that confident person that you see today. I was stuck on what I wanted to do in life. I was stuck in the restaurant business. It definitely took a huge toll during COVID. Do I still want to do the restaurant business or want to do something else? I have all these ideas I want to do, but just it, I didn't want to do any of it. It, was, it just all these ideas came and just I was lazy. And I was burnt out because I've been working ever since I was a kid. And then I met some group of friends, which it's usually really hard to find a group of friends that is just the same age as you and thinks the same as you because I have a lot of friends who are a lot older but they do the nine to five job but they're not entrepreneurs like me and so it was very hard and then I somehow got together with this group and we're the same age and they are very passionate and they're determined they have life goals and their life goals is the same as mine they brought my life back together I think because before I was just okay just I was doing that normal thing, just like going to the restaurant and just doing little things. But then I met this group and they brought me back to fire. I love that. I love that you met these friends and just reignited that fire within you and got you really inspired again and got your creativity flowing again. And they taught me about self-love, self-confidence, because they they have really big ambition, goals, and desires. And they also are entrepreneurs and they're young female businesswomen like me. So it was cool because then we have all these ideas and then we put it together because at the end of the day, you could do stuff your own, but Mm -hmm. if you have a group, a group, then it's you're able to expand your ideas even bigger than just doing it yourself. You can't do everything all by yourself. When I was growing up, I thought I could do all this by myself. I don't need anybody. But now maybe because I'm getting older too and realize there is a lot more that I could do and a lot more I could expand. But if I have a group that does it with me as well. And so this group, we're able to do that all together now. And we all have different ideas and we're all... Everybody has different specialties. Everyone's good at certain things. And so it's cool because now I'm good at this and this person's good at that. And then we're able to combine that all together. That's amazing. Yeah, that's the power of community. You empower one another. You keep each other accountable. And having the like-minded goals and sharing that same dream is, it's just so, you're right. It's so motivating. It makes it more exciting. And you mentioned self-compassion, and I truly believe that self-compassion is the root of being confident. And I love that you're now practicing this along with mindfulness and self-care. Yeah, and I before I probably was just like, wake up, didn't put any makeup, didn't do my hair. Like, I was just, okay, 
what's in a t-shirt and just go out. I didn't want to do anything. And now, now I actually find time for myself and self-love and just, just doing stuff that I want to do and just getting up, putting on makeup and just see, okay, today's a new day. So Kim, do you have any helpful tips that you would like to leave our audience with today? So I think one of the tips is nobody's perfect. Everybody makes mistakes. But if you learn from your mistakes, it'll improve you to be a better person. But I think another one is just pursue a dream. If you have a dream, pursue it. It might take some time, but one day your dream will come true. I think another tip is kind of to surround yourself with people who are very encouraging. And so just having a really good support system, surround yourself with family and friends and just people who are really encouraging you to do what you love. Have people on your side that are really supportive, really positive and very energetic around you too as well. Okay, so Cam, how can people find you? People will find me on Instagram. I have my personal one, which is I'm Kim, but Kim with four eyes. And I also have my... I also have an Instagram for my for me as a chef as well. And then probably just find me on Instagram. And then I have my own website as well, too. As well. And then business website, I think there's for Lana Thai. Okay. Lana Thai Livermore. And I think there is for Cousins as well. And then for my essential oil, that one's coming up. But we also have an Instagram for that. As well. Thank you again for being here and sharing your story such an honor and I look forward to just following you and seeing where your next entrepreneurial adventure takes you. Sounds great. If you resonate at all with the stories on this podcast and you're thinking about a change in your current situation, in your career, in your relationship, or maybe even in yourself, what's holding you back from taking the first step? Find out by taking the What's Your Biggest Self-Sabotage quiz that you can find on my website at mariagracewolf.com. Until next time, stay kind and own your journey. Thank you again for your time today. If you enjoyed this podcast, please be sure to hit subscribe, rate, and review. I would so appreciate it. The high rate and reviews will help others find the podcast so we can amplify, normalize, and break the mental health stigma. This podcast is designed to provide accurate and authoritative information in regards to the subject matter covered. This is given with the understanding that neither the host or the guest are providing legal, mental health, or other professional information. If you need a professional, you should find one. This podcast does not substitute for personal professional services.